This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. What about our Quasar podcast? What about our Quasar podcast? What about our Quasar podcast? <laughs> Wendell Vaughn, the first Earthman ever appointed protector of the universe, bonded to the energy transforming quantum bands that are both weapons and symbols of a station, fights an ongoing battle to defend all life in the universe from cosmic evil as Quake. Hello and welcome back to the Quantum Zone, episode 74. You know what that means. Next issue is going to have a nice big wraparound holographic cover. I am Phil. I, I am Will. That's the quantum zone, and uh, Matt's there somewhere, but he just got up for something. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't even see you. No, I just had a, a last minute. Oh no, I had to get something. And, and I got it. Published, it's a surprise for the end of the show. And published letter writer, master of the letter column. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Address right. withheld upon request. All right. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna get there, but uh. Yes, I know last episode, I think I promised everyone Ray would be here, uh, but, you know, it's kind of, he he uh, he can't make it. It's kind of hard a lot of times because there is a 14-hour time difference between us. Sounds like an excuse to me. <laughs> I know. No. But, yes, he couldn't join us tonight, so go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> he couldn't join us. Two t- nights with a K. It's <laughs> a ah, moon night. He he love it. The Moon Night Podcast. <laughs> Great. Uh-huh. The jokes practically write themselves, folks, right? Oh, <laughs> Matt Kona is an artiste. He's a renaissance man. He writes jokes. He writes letters to uh, Marvel Comics. That's right. Yeah. There's all sorts of jokes across the Spectre. Um, <laughs> oh. Mark Spectre. <laughs> Mark Spectre. All right. Yeah. You know, it's been a little over a week since we recorded, because we recorded early last week, and then this week it's Friday, so he's been he's been pent up for the last week and a half. I'm like a caged animal. <laughs> All right. But yes, for those of you who uh, didn't see our social media, yes, last week, Guardians of the, yeah, last week, Guardians of the Galaxy number seven came out. And just, fl- you know, just flipping through before I even read the issue, because I was like entering my code, you know, on the website. And I just happened to glance at the letter page and I'm just like, wait, did I see Matt Cone's name in the letter thing? <laughs> <laughs> you kept it a I love, I let my voice be heard. Yeah. Yes, and it got heard by the world. So, did you email this? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I emailed it. There's, I don't even think there's an option to mail a physical letter anymore. But I would have done that. I would have done it. Oh yeah, because so. the the emails at the bottom. M- yeah, at Marvel. And it, yeah, and it's just the same email for all of them. So there must be a lot of hard work for whoever has to sort <laughs> through those. And yeah, I didn't know what to expect. I just sent it in, and. uh I think that was the first letter I ever sent to a comic. I feel like I maybe thought about doing it before, but uh, never got around to it. And problem with being such a bad... I've, I've always liked back issues and reading older things. So, you know, you can't write a letter. It's uh, it's old news by then. <laughs> but I have been I have been reading the new Guardians of the Galaxy pretty much since it came out. And uh, so something happened. Quasar got mentioned... <laughs> And I, I had to speak up. Well, yeah, he was it. in that annual. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, and I asked Mr. Kona if he could actually read the letter in his own voice. <laughs> no impressions. Do, yeah, do your Matt Kona impression and please read the letter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you want me to do it now? You want me to wait till the end? Whatever. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't have to deal with the issue we're talking tonight. So, yeah, I mean, do, yeah, go ahead and do it. True. Go ahead, do, it do it now. All right. Well, I want to give a little context okay. because letter was in response to two letters that were in issue four. So I'll read those. They're pretty short ones. Okay. All right. This first one is come from Carlos. Really enjoyed the first issue, and I'm really looking forward to the rest of the series. Also, is Wendell, parentheses, Quasar back? Would Kate be down to write a Quasar mini? And will we get to see what the heroes who are sucked in by the rift are up to in possibly the next two to three issues? Carlos. And then uh, the editor, who, uh, who is the editor? Sean? I don't know. I got to look it up earlier. Says, yeah, we might tell the story of what happened to those heroes someday. Maybe. We'll see. 
just kind of teasing what happened in the annual, annual I think. <laughs> and then the next is uh, the next uh, letter. I saw the cover of this book. It was immediately intrigued. All of the big cosmic heroes together in one book, including Darkhawk. <laughs> also, uh, the big heroes, Darkhawk. <laughs> also, do you think there is any chance we will get to see Wendell Vaughn in this book? He is one of my favorite cosmic heroes, and I would love to see him return to the mantle of Quasar. In any case, keep up the great work, Jeff Polinsky. That's a guy we should probably add into the Facebook group. <laughs> and then here... His response, ever since I started working on the Cosmic books, all I hear is Quasar, Quasar, Quasar. <laughs> oh, and, there's a mic. There's a, and and Tarkov, 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 Tarkov. Tarkov. to say, Quasar, Quasar, Quasar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, and Darkhawk, Darkhawk, Darkhawk. <laughs> Someone explain this to me. <laughs> so I, I, I read that and said, you know what? I will explain it <laughs> to right. you. All right. And I his letter. That's, I, I took out my my keyboard warrior cap, and uh, I think this. Well, this is probably the second longest letter that got published. That one. There's one that's a little bit longer, but it's broken up into some paragraphs. So here we go. This is in response to the letters page of Guardians of the Galaxy number four. After two people asked you about Wendell Vaughn as Quasar, let me try to explain his appeal. The 90s Mark Gruenwald's run is tremendously entertaining, and you should seek it out. Parentheses. Marvel has put out two trades that go up to issue number 25. It's also a common site in dollar bins, and there are multiple podcasts about it. Didn't want to get the plug in there. I thought that might have been edited, but you know, people can look it up. Uh, he's a very real character with human flaws and quirks who has always been fighting for validation from his dad, Eon, 90s comic buyers, <laughs> and has been to Cosmic Hell and back multiple times. He's an endearing character who happens to have some cool powers thanks to the Quantum Bands, and many of us would like to see more of him, either in Guardians of the Galaxy or his own series. I hope I have made a difference, and you get a chance to know Wendell a little better. Matt Kona. And then uh, he has a nice, re nice enough reply. Thanks for the recommendations, Matt, and I hope you checked out the annual that featured Quasar. There might just be a little tease in there for some more Quasar in the future. Now, if someone could just explain to me the appeal of Darkhawk. <laughs> yes, hell of a... Hell of a I, I think I can explain the Darkhawk, too, all right? Now, I feel like Darkhawk it is kind of like an inside joke that's come to life in the last couple of years because I, I belong to a couple of Facebook fan pages. I'll, I could maybe add you guys to them, but if someone posted a while ago, like their Darkhawk number one, it was like a grail and they just kept posting about it. And now every time someone finds Darkhawk number one in a dollar bin, they always post pictures of it and say like, all hail Darkhawk. And it entertains me endlessly. <laughs> And I have, I have a bunch of dark hawks. They're 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 fine, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. And and I did read like the newest one, and it seems kind of fun. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really consider dark hawk to be that cosmic. I know he battles the raptors. They're kind of cosmic beings too, and the amulet or whatever is cosmic. But yeah, I was gonna say, I, I, anyway, this is about quasar. Yeah, I think his his powers come from a cosmic source. You know. Mm -hmm. And hey, uh, Mike yeah. Manley, after leaving Quasar, went to Pencil Dark. Mm. So I think he he might be listed as a co-creator, but I'm not sure. So it's got a Quasar connection. <laughs> so stay tuned for uh, 2025 when we do our Dark Hawk. Dark Hawk. <laughs> oh man, yeah, there's like 40 episodes. So, yes, <laughs> one hell of a Matt Kona impression. Thank you, sir. Yes, bravo. He would be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> and two. Uh -huh. And two, you're a lesson for the kids. So see, kids, write your letters to Marvel, and you might get published in an actual comic book. That's right. Yeah. Let's start a qua Let's let's flood their bins with Quasar. Yes. Well, he's we did it, do that. Well, didn't did, didn't he say in that one in, in response to that one letter that he keeps hearing about Quasar, Quasar, Quasar? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Quasar bunch. The Quasar. Bunch. I mean, look at us. We're almost in a Brady bunch. Uh, that's right, we got the grist here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a story of a man named Wendell. Well, <laughs> can you look more like Brady Bunch? He was living in his dad's house in Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> Do we look more like the Brady Bunch or like Hollywood Squares? 
<laughs> we'll all rape. It's the circle. Get the axe. <laughs> I, 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 okay, you gotta go here now. <laughs> uh, all right. So, should we get to tonight's uh, issue? We're back to Qua- regular Quasar. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> this feels good. Feels good. Oh, wait till you see the. Uh, I've been modifying the art for the for you know for every episode. Mm-hmm. Wait until you see when this one hits. He. You see, he's thinking gulp on the cover. He's not thinking gulp when I edit it. When I <laughs> nice, he's thinking his favorite planet. <laughs> I wonder what that. So is. look, so look for Easter eggs on my modified art that we'll every have, week. We'll have to wait and see. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, and yes, we'll we'll do a bunch of live reads as we get to each scene. Maybe we'll figure out who you know. Who wants to do what? But uh, we know who's who's doing Hercules this issue, right? Yay and verily. <laughs> I, I was just looking into the four episode today. Oh my lord, I love it. That was a lot of fun. You know what's funny? After we recorded that, I went to uh, there's a comic book store in Somerville, and I I they have a little bin that's like for kids. It's like free free comic on the way out, and there was a coverless copy. Of that Thor issue versus oh, really? Quasar that we had, yeah. And uh, I should have just wrote the podcast on it. Listen to this being read, <laughs> but instead, instead I just I just took it. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. So, all right. So this one we're doing Quasar twenty eight, not, not twenty nine, like I told Matt Kodak. Quasar twenty eight. <laughs> Who will be her mate? <laughs> Decisions, decisions, decisions. Uh, got a great Capullo cover on it. Yes. Yeah, you get yeah, you got a bunch of people in here. Uh, of course, Quasar's in the back, but you get uh, Colossus of the X-Men, Gilgamesh. Hey, our buddy Gilgamesh is back. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. And he's he's, he's patched yeah. up, because last time we saw him, he was pretty... Uh, yeah, the man, yeah. yeah. I'd forgotten about him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Doc, Doc Samson, of course, Hercules, as we mentioned, Hyperion of the Squadron Supreme, Captain America, Eric Masterson, Thor, it's back. Is that is that Icarus of the new? Of the, uh, I think it's Earl? Icarus, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Captain Britain, Wonder Man, and Namor. Mm-hmm. Yes, Namor, frown, ever present frown right. on Namor. Maybe maybe his trunks are too tight or something. <laughs> Uh, so yes, Quasar 28 from November 1991. Uh, of course, Mark Grunwald. Yay. Greg Capullo. Penciler. Yay. Yay. Harry Candelario Inker. That's a new one. That's right. Harry is an awesome dude. I've known him for a lot of years now. He is an amazing inker. Oh, really? Yep. Hmm. So you could call him a friend of the podcast. We could call him a friend of the podcast. Yep. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, why don't you tell me? We could have seen if he could come on tonight, but that, that would, this is his this is his first issue with Capullo where he inked him, and then they were a team together throughout their run on Quasar, and then when they moved over to X Force. Oh, nice! Oh, well, so yeah, and he's an awesome dude. I mean, awesome. I dude. mean, they do good work together. Oh yeah, really good work. Uh, and our old friend Janice Chiang, letterer, Joe Rosis, colorist. Kelly Corvus, editor, and Tom DeFelco, editor in chief. I don't know if I brought this up, but um, I was listening to an old interview with DeFelco, and he was saying, "Remember in the '90s, because we were talking Thunderstrike two episodes back. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, when the '90s, you know, when they had to like cut down the Marvel line, it came down to like Thor and Thunderstrike, and I guess they went with Thor because he was classic. But DeFelco claimed that Thunderstrike was outselling Thor. Wow, yeah, huh? that's interesting. I've got. Oh, I don't know where it is around here, but uh, one of the guides from, um, oh, heck, the, uh, it used to be the weekly magazine comics. Uh, was it Overstreet? It was, or? It, was, it was a newspaper thing. Oh, okay, uh, okay. The one that Don and Maggie Thompson did, and I cannot remember the name of it. But they did a, did a price guide, and it also gives circulation numbers hmm. for stuff, which is really cool because I had one for, it has Quasar listed in it, because mm-hmm. I was curious. Uh, but it is around here somewhere, so I will see if I can find it, and we can we can talk circulation numbers next time if you want. Awesome! All right, of course. 
All right. So the first scene is uh, uh, Wendell and uh, Macari moving into their apartment. Uh, Matt Cody, you want to do Macari? Sure. And this takes place after the conclusion. Yes, you can get that note at the bottom of the uh, page. And that they're on a ground floor apartment. So that's <laughs> We're going to get a bunch of editor's so. notes. And, uh, <laughs> Macari, can, oh, yeah. Macari can run right in. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not it's, not, it's on it's on West End Avenue and hundred and second street. So maybe we should go there someday, do a live <laughs> podcast from outside of our apartment. People are gonna like, What are you doing here? <laughs> this was in this Keep it down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you must know. All right. All right. It's on those ce- the celebrity maps, yeah. maps yeah. of the stars. Maps to the Cosmos. All right. All right. Here's Macari. Sleeveless striped shirt. Really fastly unpacking. <laughs> hey, crazy man. You mean to tell me using your quantum bands for home improvements is a legitimate use for the official weapon of the protector of the universe? Yeah, he's sawing through some kind of like uh, wood. With my mentor gone, I'm my own boss now, Mac. Who's going to tell me what I can or cannot use the Q, Q bands for? Ooh. Besides, the more I use them, the better I get at manipulating energy. Can't be a good protector of the you if you can't if I can't handle the tool well. <laughs> yeah, so why why are you even fi- bothering with fixing yourself a home while you've got a whole ding dong universe to go out and protect? <laughs> <Dang it. laughs> boy, boy, you really like riding me about my job title, don't you? Aha, <laughs> uh-huh, evading the question. Truth is, my runny roomy. <laughs> Say that three times fast. I haven't quite scoped out how best to go about my job yet. In the meantime, there's nothing like a little manual labor to clear out the mental cobwebs. Hey, what's that? He said, changing the subject. Oh, this uh, terracotta statue, Plato. Plato? The Plato? Yes, sir, Bob. He was my philosophy professor. I know, you're, I know you're an eternal and all, Mac, but just how old are you anyway? Four huh? and a half. We <laughs> e-folk only celebrate our birthdays once a millennium. Wow, so who's the oldest of you guys? My running guru, Master Elo, almost a thousand. A thousand millennia? That's a million years old. Yep. Must be odd to have such a long view of time. Must be odd not to. (laughs) You know, though I've hung out with all sorts of uh, humies, I usually make it a rule not to get too close to them. Seems like as soon as you get a good relationship going, they grow old on you and die. Glad you made it an exception in my case, Mackie. (laughs) How do you know you're going to age like other humies, Q-Ball? Maybe these funky handbands of yours will keep you young. Huh, I never thought of that. Sure wish Eon were still alive. He'd probably be able to tell me. How about Eon's little sprout? What's his name? Epoch? Nah. He's just a newborn cosmic entity. It's going to take him a while to get cosmically aware. Hey, this yours? I didn't know you played the geek box. I used to. Haven't had so much. I haven't so much as touched it since I became P of the U. <laughs> Uh, mind if I plunk on it a bit? I used to play a little myself. Jam with Elvis once, back before we hit a big, You're of course. You're kidding. Plato and Elvis? <laughs> Who else did you? Whoops. According to my cue bands, there's something unusually energetic in the immediate vicinity. I'll check it out in half a No, gif. I'll go. If I identify the energy signature correctly, it's someone I've run into before. You can finish unpacking. Um... um. I'm not here to hassle you about that. Oh, that's you. Sorry. <laughs> Nothing up my sleeve except my uniform board and my quantum bands. And we get a flat. Yo, yo, Quays. What? You got the wrong costume huh? on. You're right. I do. Thanks, Mac. And he changes it with another flash. <laughs> I'm going to have to take that suit out of storage and dispose of it. Last week, I wore the whole thing for a whole day before I realized my mistake. Later, pal. So there's our fixing uh, editor's note fixing Infinity Gauntlet. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> paging Doctor Grunwald. Doctor Grunwald. <laughs> All right. So, and outside we see uh, Will. You want to do Jack of Hearts? Okay, sure. All right. Uh, meanwhile, out outside. <laughs> He's just like Jack's, just like walking down the street. Yep, just who I thought it was. Hey, Jack of Hearts. Ah, Quasar, my mistress was right in thinking he'd be here. I meant to try to find you after you exploded. Uh, back in issue number 20. But things got really busy for me after that. <laughs> yeah, dying and stuff. <laughs> Looks like you didn't need my help. 
I'm not here to hassle you about that. Good. I was half expecting a meaningless slugfest, to tell you the truth. I came here to ask you to renounce whatever romantic inclinations you have toward Moondragon. What? I have no... Where do you get... Look, Jack, I have no idea where you get your information, but I assure you, I have no romantic ideas about Moondragon whatsoever. She's an acquaintance of mine, and that's it. The last time... Oh, that's you. Oh, okay. Sorry. The last time she and I spoke, she had some funny ideas about me, but I promise you, I don't share them. If you're interested in her, she's all yours. I won't go near her, okay? I would have thought a big cosmic muckamuck like yourself would go for the most celestial woman alive. Qualifications have nothing to do with feelings, Jack. You say you'll stay away from her? I have no reason not to accept your word. It takes off with a whoosh. whoosh. <laughs> and it starts flying down back to the ground. What was that all about? Moon Dragon put him up to that? Was that supposed to make me think of her as more desirable? Knowing she's got some serious suitors? And above. <laughs> Mission accomplished. The mistress will... Eh, then, he must be Canadian. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Alpha flight alum. <laughs> he turns and sees her. And she goes, you're not completely human, are you? Huh? Who are I you? Says something alien about you. You'll never do. And she flies away. <laughs> what? She moves like grease lightning. Who was she? Go Grease Lightning. <laughs> it's not she. It's uh, her. Aha. Uh, 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 pronoun trouble. All right. So he pops up the Moon Dragon <laughs> ship. Uh, Matt, you want to do Moon Dragon? Wait. Uh, sure. This is still. Oh, this is still yeah. Jack, right? Perhaps my mistress will know her. Know her. No. <laughs> not know her. Sorry. Perhaps my mistress will know. Her knowledge is only surpassed by her beauty. Mistress, I delivered the. I know. What do you want? What do you know of the woman I met who? She calls herself her. <laughs> she is a woman grown in a laboratory and bestowed with a vast personal energy. What did she want of me? I felt like she was. I'm certain. I'm uncertain. When we met several years ago, she... dirty. <laughs> uh, which is an editor note. Back in Marvel 2 and 1, number 61 through 63, which is way back there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She was searching for her ideal mate, even as I am now. Hmm. I fear we will soon be working at cross purposes, she and I. All right. And this this will be very, uh, <laughs> below. Back in a New York apartment as I play the Seinfeld out. <laughs> uh, the Wendell at the front door. What? Another powerful life form? Whoever it was just flew out of the vicinity. Guess I could check it out, but let me touch base with Makari first as he walks in. <laughs> and everything's done. <laughs> Whoa, mm -hmm. it's all done? I've barely been gone five minutes. You must have been holding back before. Well, I wanted to save some of the fun for you, but I kind of got carried Looks away. Great, can't complain. Say, I've got to... Now what? Ah, uh, the communa card's going off. All right. <laughs> Time <laughs> Oh. All the, last, the last couple episodes together. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, young Quasar. Hercules. I crave a boon of you, Avenger. And after a brief explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Matt, gotta run again. Avenger's business. Uh. To see where Quasar is running off to, check out Thor number 437, which was on sale at the same time as this, but also something we covered. Two episodes ago. <laughs> Episodes ago. <laughs> Be back as soon as I can. And then, oh, we're about to get a bunch of cameos in the Marvel Universe. That's right. Because <laughs> meanwhile, we see her flying somewhere and she's thinking, to think I've waited all this time to undertake the fulfillment of my destiny. What a fool I've been. For years, I believed that my predecessor, the man once known as him, was my perfect mate. And when I was born to breed with in order to create a glorious new race, race of human being and but when i long la but when at long last i met him he rejected me <laughs> okay uh which was last issue of course <laughs> my first impulse was to force him to help me realize my destiny but i didn't it wasn't until i meditated upon my situation for some time before i realized the dreadful delusion that i was laboring under all along his genetic material was identical to mine, with the exception of the sex-determining chromosome. To combine our genes would be redundant, of no genetic advantage one whatsoever. <sighs> Tell that to West Virginia. <laughs> uh, 
Consequently, I have embarked upon my quest for beings of power whose genetic material would complement my own. There is a great concentration of such power in this out-of-the-way dwelling. Who lives here, I wonder? And then, as if that, as if an answer, he denied these X-Men music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we see Cyclops, Colossus, and Wolverine come charging out of the mansion. Careful, X Men! Mm-hmm. Security sensors indicate a being of near Phoenix level power. See, that's strong. That's cool. That's good to know. I forgot that they put her up at that high level. I mean, she's. Cosmic, I know. I figured right? she was strong, but I know she's Phoenix level. <laughs> and it's a woman. And uh, the Canadian Wolverine, identify your, yourself, Toots. <laughs> I'm her. And you are mutants. Duh. <laughs> Your genetic material is too unstable. You are not what I'm looking for. She takes off. Cyclops is like, what was that about? <laughs> All right. And in Earth's atmosphere, Moon Dragon ship. Uh, wish I could help my mistress, but her mind goes where m- none can follow. I found her. She's on a quest for a new mate. She had better stay away from Quasar. He is my conquest. I shall not be denied him. She may be my physical superior, but if she dares come between my intended and me, I'll make her pay. All right. But then the next day. All right. I'll read her. Uh, Will, you want to do Wonder Man and uh, Matt can be the agent? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> and we could we see her flying in the Hollywood. Another potential mate nearby. In here, she, like, makes a hole in the wall. <laughs> so how does it look, Neil? Do I have the part or not? Simon, baby, didn't I tell you it was all about... Uh, did, t- did I tell you it was all but in the bag? Why do you think I make the big bucks? You feel a draft in here? Whoa, friend of yours? Uh, let's see. Never saw her before in my life. If this is another of your publicity stunts, Neil, just... Hope your blue cross is paid up. Mind replacing that window, lady? She flies out. If you wish, and she uh, fixes the wall, it served its purpose to bring you close enough to do this as she starts kissing him and touching the back of his neck. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that for? Uh, congratulations. Your genetic phenotype is acceptable to me. I've chosen you to be one of my mates. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the scam what'd she want i don't know just to kiss me i guess superhero groupie it was inevitable I mean, that was pod on the back of his neck <laughs> yeah yeah and we see her flying through the air thinking almost 24 hours spent seeking out screening potential mates and i am almost through uh i have no idea that there would be so many superhuman men to interview <laughs> <laughs> okay, now before we read this, yep. I can identify Jack of Hearts, Colossus, Captain Britain, Doctor Strange, Hulk, Thing, Doctor Spectrum, Nova. I'm pretty sure that that's the Aquarian. Mm-hmm. Namor, uh, Vanguard, Cable, Rage, uh, Makari, uh, Wizard. I'm thinking that that's a uh, U.S. agent at the bottom. And then what was U.S. agent's partner? Battlestar. Name? Battlestar, I could not remember him. But who is the guy behind is, Captain Britain? Is that Forge? Oh, uh, Dr. Druid, oh. maybe? Dr. Druid, oh, maybe. I bet you uh, that's yeah. who it is. Yeah. I bet you that. Because he's with the magic, magic yeah. guys. Yeah. yeah, That makes sense. Yeah, gotcha. Forge would be a little out of place there, but I know he liked the scarfs in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> and I was going to say, was is this the period? Uh, it might have been later, but the, 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 when they de-aged Dr. Druid, they gave him like the uh, ponytail and, I think so. hair yeah. and ponytail and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea there would be so many superhuman men to interview. Some were disqualified because of their extraterrestrial genes, which would not combine well with my own, as we see Jack of Hearts. Some were incompatible with me because of their power lay outside the electromagnetic spectrum. Magic, I believe one of them called it. Scores were rejected because they were mutants. Again, racism. <laughs> yeah. Others simply proved to be too physically imperfect to seriously consider uh, the Hulk and thing. thing yeah. <laughs> While some had incompatible metabolisms or insufficient physical power, <laughs> still others were bizarre hybrids or, or suffered from chromosome damage. Yeah, because Cable had that techno-organic virus. Yeah. 
Still, I've identified and tagged three promising candidates so far, and I've saved several significant possibilities to screen for last. Surely among them, my prime mate will reveal himself. Okay, here's my question. Her, her prime mate? Uh, <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it Kong? <laughs> hey, monkeys are cool, man. I mean, I guess she needed the Y chromosome, but since all she's doing is placing pods on people next, couldn't she have gone to females? I don't see why. I mean, it's unless not. it's the chromosome thing, I guess. Yeah. All right. We're going to tie up another uh, <laughs> loose end yeah, here. <laughs> uh, yeah, a wrap up of Thor 437, which we covered two episodes ago. And this also appeared in that uh, Captain America issue we covered last episode with the uh, Alpha <laughs> Flight stuff. Because. Uh, all right, hmm. Will, you want to do Captain America? You all bet. All right. So, Avengers, Avengers headquarters later that day. <laughs> Why so dour, young Quasar? The, tis Captain America we be summons to see, not the Lord of Death. I'd rather be. Ye- oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather be yelled at by the Lord of. How'd it go, Thor? Thor comes walking out of Captain America's office and uh, he says, Well, I wasn't kicked off the team. <laughs> After Jeez, you. Thanks. Have a seat. I, I hate having to play uh, disciplinarian, guys. What's else about you two getting into a brawl with Thor? Um, well, you see... Captain, the blame is totally the Prince of Powers. I tricked young Quasar here into helping me train the new Thor in the ways of combat. See Thor number 437, which is still on sale. Well, it was back then. <laughs> if there be need to censure anyone, I insist that... <laughs> in tr- uh, let's see. Intruder on the premises. This can this talk can wait. Allow me to get get us there pronto. Go ahead, son. And flip. Less than a minute later, we see them come flying in on a quantum construct. <laughs> she's a woman. She's she's dressed differently, but isn't that the cosmic lady? Her we met up in Toronto. Looks like it to me. And that's in Alpha Flight numbers ninety nine and hundred. Or last episode. <laughs> Last episode. <laughs> uh, get back, Michael. Security Chief Michael O'Brien. Uh, we can handle this. If you wanted to see us, you could have made an appointment, lady. You didn't have to do property damage. What I destroy with my cosmic power, I can easily recreate. Okay. The question remains, what brings you here? Obviously, she is here to see the Lion of Hercules Olympus. Hercules is right. Even a stopped clock is right twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> Milady? Your great attributes to become one of my mates. You say you wish to what? <laughs> Mate with you. <laughs> Thou hast talked me <laughs> yeah, into it. Took a lot of convincing. <laughs> it took a whole lot of convincing. <laughs> As she's like rubbing up against the front of Hercules, you, Captain, are the pinnacle of human perfection, but regrettably, you are still merely human. And you, Quasar, have no true power at all. It's all in your weapons. <laughs> Thor, whom I met moments before you arrived has an irksome enchantment about him which leaves only hercules here i'll be in Milady? touch hercules why wait the son of zeus stands there already <laughs> <laughs> she finds it. perhaps she wishes to contemplate the pleasures that await her rather hey, Herc, than what did she stick on your back eh? i fear i am unable to Look reach at this cap it looks like some sort of cocoon Cocoon? Art thou jesting? If you don't mind postponing our reprimand until later... Oh, wait. Whatever it is, it's alive. If you don't mind postponing our reprimand until later, I'm going to catch up with her and ask her what she's trying to pull. As he flies up, he runs into uh, Hyperion. <laughs> uh, Will, you want to do Hyperion? Okay, sure. Whoa, Hyperion almost ran into you. No time to talk, pal. I'm trying to catch a lady. She got you, too? What? You mean zoom down to Avengers... Zoom down to the Avengers. When I catch her, I'll bring her there. Uh, hey, wait. I think he knew what I was talking about. The golden woman who accosted me and attached some sort of organism to my back. It's Is that it's still yeah. him? Yeah, it's bad enough to sit about Project Pegasus with precious little to occupy my time. If he thinks I'm going to just sit back and let him handle this sticky situation alone. He's got another thing coming. <laughs> Great. Argon, that kid can move. Got to really pour on the speed. All right, I've cl- closed the gap. 
thought I did, but he must have been waiting to get up into the upper atmosphere before really pour, opening up. So Hyperion is like, a, you know, Marvel's version of Superman. So are we saying Quasar is faster than <laughs> Superman? Thank you. Uh, I yeah, I'm totally down. Yes. Because <laughs> uh, Quasar's thinking my fix on her energy signature is getting stronger. Ought to make visual contact soon. Yeah, there she is. Lady, I'm slowing you down. And he makes like a quantum parachute attached to her feet. <laughs> Out of parachute boots, grab you, he's thinking. <laughs> and she says, my feet, as she starts blasting at it. Wow, she's actually managed to chip off pieces from it. <laughs> her cosmic energy is nothing to sneeze at. The construct was as solid as any I've ever formed. Yo, her, I want to talk to you. When we when we met fighting those aliens alongside Alpha Flight, I figured you to be one of the good guys. So what's the deal sticking living parasites on Hercules and Hyperion's backs? She says, those are not parasites. Those are pods of my genetic material, which will soon combine with theirs in order to produce offspring. The ultimate offspring in which the human species is capable. Now remove these impediments at once. And he says, lady, you can't just force a person to combine his genetic material with yours. There's a word for that. And she says, no one tells her what she can and cannot do. And she throws a blast at him, but he diverts it with a quantum construct. Cuban sense that coming. Now that wasn't very nice. Here we are having a pleasant discussion, and you haul off and blast me one. I think I'd better power you down before this goes any further. And she's thinking, what is he? No. And he's thinking, or no, she's still thinking, he's siphoning my cosmic energy. I must get away. Perhaps. Yes. She starts falling. What? Clever. She's the first person I've ever fought who figured out that oh, that I can only drain her energy from them if they're expending it. She totally shut down all energy expenditures, including keeping herself afloat. Better catch her. I'll convert her shoot boots into a nice soft trampoline. She's just laying there. She's not lying there. Not. She's just lying there, not moving. Wow. When she shuts down everything, she shuts down everything. <laughs> uh, so he wraps her up. Did she even switch off her autonomic life functions i barely get a reading but her wrap her up just in case she's playing possum so he makes her like a uh, sandwich wrap uh what if she isn't what if her life force is so inextricably attached to her energy output that i upset the balance and put her into a coma jack of hearts energy was like that at the time we tussled he says her are you there well, can I just pause for a sec? Because I don't think he, he made her into like a cosmic sandwich trap. I think it was more of a her ito. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was such a good one. The button got stuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the drum solo, baby. Rush. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, and she says, let me out of this, Quasar, or I will consider you one of my enemies. And he's like, huh? Whew. Not till we talk. Those cocoons you stuck on Hype and Hercules, and she says, and four others. What? Who? Never mind. That for now. Just tell me how the things come off. She says, they don't. They're bought into my mates with cosmic energy. You mean there's no way under the sun to? Not without killing them. Who? The cocoons or the mates? I do not know. I've never done this before. How long do they remain attached? <laughs> Several months, I would imagine, till they come to term. Whew. I don't like those answers, lady. You're coming with me back to Avengers headquarters, and you're going to find some way... Undo the damage you've done. She says, it is not damage, you fool. It is creation. Quasar, there you are. You got her, I see. Yeah, but the scoop on those pods is not a very good one, I'm afraid. They're definitely alive. They're attached by cosmic energy, and they're sucking genetic material from you. She's thinking, he's distracted. I must focus all my po all the power at my command into a single thrust as she punches through the quantum construct. <laughs> Holy crap. Holy crap, As yeah. Quasar says, <laughs> so what I thought I'd do is, uh, she grabs him by the throat. I have reconsidered Quasar for the great resourcefulness you have demonstrated in our interactions. You have earned yourself the privilege of being one of my mates. <laughs> uh, Mom said there'd be days like this. <laughs> oh, wait, I don't want, I don't want to spoil the next issue. <laughs> He's like, what? You didn't. He's feeling his neck. She did. But then Jack of Hearts returns. All right, her, for what you've just done to Quasar, my mistress says you must pay. I like how uh, Hyperion and Quasar have just questioned speech bubbles. They're like, what? What the? Yeah. <laughs> I was just waiting for a thought bubble from Quasar. Not again. 
<laughs> Pack of Hearts it always shows up the most inopportune time. <laughs> That's right. But I know, like, way back, we were talking about, like, one day we might have to cover some of those Last Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, the 90s series issues, because what was it in that timeline? Quasar and her become the parents of, was it Starhawk? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is really cool. Yeah, we could fit those in. We could fit those in after the next issue because that's when this get, this storyline gets kind of wrapped I, up. I right? have to find them first. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I I got them. I got them. I can also send you a link to them digitally if you want. If you need them, if you oh, can't find them, oh, and stuff. cool. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, yeah. I think those last couple, some of those last issues are hard to find. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was. I mean, I think there was kind of a low print yeah. run on some of them. Yeah, as the series was winding mm-hmm. down, it sold less and less and less. Yeah, okay, I'd say like the yeah. last five or ten issues. Yeah, they're hard to find. Mm-hmm. But that yeah. was that Guardian series started off really good. I mean, the first half of it's, I remember waiting for you know every every month just to to read it. It was good I stuff. I love fans Astro with that she- Captain America shield. Yes, that's yeah. freaking Whipping awesome. It around by the way. telekinesis. <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> yes. Not ne- maybe not as cool as throwing it and using Mjolnir to like beat the crap out of Thanos <laughs> with, but you know, still pretty cool. <laughs> True. Speaking of, have you seen Spider Man yet? I still have not seen it yet. I'm a slacker. I know. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hanging my head in shame. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, breaking news. <laughs> I've not seen Spider Man yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do we think? Her. What do we think of her? <laughs> <laughs> Who her? <laughs> Don't uh-huh. her to me. Uh-huh. I really, uh-huh. I really like what Grunewald did with her to give her her own identity. Yeah. And I, I thought Kismet was a really cool name. I mean, spoilers. That's you know what she's going to take the name. Kismet yeah, kind of yeah. so. kind of makes her unique. Not like you know. Adam Warlock's female double or whatever. Yeah. And then I don't think, I think, I mean, she's basically a supporting character the rest of the book. I mean, right? Um, I mean, she's not necessarily in every issue, but she's in a lot of issues. Yeah, because I think she makes it almost to pretty much the end, doesn't she? Yeah, I think so. She's part of the universe. Yeah. Yeah. But then um, I, I think she's used again in like Chris Claremont's reboot of the, you know, Heroes Return Fantastic Four. Maybe. Is that where she shows up again after Maybe. this? Maybe. I can't remember. It's been a long yeah. time since I've looked at those. Locked but up. I kind of think that that's what they were pulling from for her appearance in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy mm. in the movie is that stuff that was going on in the those Fantastic Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe if we get Quasar in the movies, maybe we'll get her. <laughs> her! her. <laughs> <laughs> We have uh-huh. her. She's the leader of the planet that they... <laughs> and isn't she, I think, isn't she at least in uh, one of those uh, Quasar issues for in Galactic Storm? Oh, yeah, because she's fighting... Um, she's out there fighting with uh, Binary. Yeah. And, yeah, there's a... Yeah, she's out there a bunch. And then when they leave after Galactic Storm, she goes with them, mm-hmm. with Ian Makari, so... None. Cool stuff. But, yeah, but yeah, if Will and I can find those Guardians of the Galaxy issues. Yeah, maybe we'll have to do that after... We do issue twenty nine, <laughs> which I thought was cool because what, what, hey, guess, what, guess who? The, what could have been in that cocoon? <laughs> yeah, guess who the uh, that I know of. Well, who knows after after the Bendis years and the Hickman years, I I didn't keep up. So, but up until then, as far as I know, they were the only Avengers that were you know maybe temporarily displaced. But one of them, they were father and son, mm. uh, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know any. But, you know, you had Stature join, I guess, after or during the Bendis run. Mm-hmm. And you had Ant-Man. So, I don't know if necessarily that's the case anymore, but... I, yeah. I always like Stature. I always like the Scott Lang. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Oh, what was I going to say? Uh, I'm old. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I thought it was a fun issue. I, I like oh. that there was... Little weird cameos. It's a quirky, weird thing. That's how she's trying to find multiple mates, putting this weird thing on her. Looks like mm-hmm. 
pieces of eon and uh <laughs> oh you had some you had some you had some light some lighthearted sidekick stuff with Makari and you know tying into the uh, kind of a, a thread that's been in multiple other books captain america and thor that, that was uh that was cool and all, over and all that, real enjoyable that continuity error from infinity gauntlet <laughs> yeah Love okay, it. here's yeah. I got all right. I remembered a little question I was gonna ask before, but I have another question too. All right, first he called Epoch him in this issue, so it, I I will, I've always been confused with this. Is it is Epoch a, a male or female? I've always considered Epoch her. Yeah, because I because I thought she was female too. That was a little yeah, and I, I think that. they kind of standardize on her for Epoch later, later yeah. on. But I I'd forgotten they'd referred. To Epoch is he here? I mean, it, I don't guess it really matters. No, I'm, ancient, ancient cosmic beings. So. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think Eon was getting any. So it's a, the, but yeah. <laughs> they, and they always called Eon him. But it, you know, I mean, yeah, he laid an egg, and <laughs> yeah, I do like how he calls you know calls Epoch Spudling or you know <laughs> little. You know, I just think that's kind of cool. Uh, her. So I'm going to refer to Epoch as she. Is she takes the place of Eon as the daughter of the axis of time and whatever. I mean, if you listen to, you know, Eon gives him, you know, who he is, you know, in the very like first issue, mm. you're like, okay, wait, what? Uh -huh. You're the, the, the uh, what? <laughs> Cosmic being. Nuff said, <laughs> nuff said. <laughs> All right. My other question was, do you think, I don't know, some of these superhuman guys would have come around to, you know, <laughs> I don't know, bearing offspring if uh, her her made it in the more traditional way. <laughs> so I remember reading this issue back in the day, and I'm just like, does it? Does she remind you of like you know Baywatch era Pam, Pamela Anderson? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Quasar was a believing god, so they couldn't mate in the biblical. Sense. <laughs> and and Hercules was was down. Oh yeah, he was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Until we found the crew. Yeah, he was ready to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. What? <laughs> <laughs> Hercules was ready to go right there in front of Cap and Quasar. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The Lion of Olympus. That's right. <laughs> Showing off his might. <laughs> Would you like to see uh, Mount Olympus, my dear? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Fun time. Sometimes. All right. So, anything else, gentlemen? Next, uh, next, next episode, we get the cover that everybody loves to make fun of. Oh Zara. yeah, the pregnancy cover. Yes, yeah, which is a joke cover aimed at the the Demi Moore cover. I mean, it's it's a joke on a joke. Yeah. I mean, oh my god. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think we discussed this before. Well, the, what issue numbers were was the whole. Of Guardians of the Galaxy was that Quasar and her, uh, uh, that Arlock was or whatever. 60, 61, 62, and 63, I think. Hang on a second. I can tell you for sure. It was the final three issues. Was that 60? Yeah, what did they go to? 62 or 63? So it might be 61, 2, and 3. But Okay, it is... Oh, 59, he appears at the uh, very okay. end of 59. So 59, 60, 61, and 62. Okay. So if we could actually find him, I mean, we could probably just do 60, 61, and 62. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's closing the show. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, dealing with the white room, you know, and which we haven't got to yet in oh, the series. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's cool. And actually, we, you brought up, I think, last week or the week before last, um, that since the Avril Quasar was part of this cosmic cube thing that she probably didn't have the bands that Wendell Maybe, had. yeah, yeah. Maybe. So, and plus, you know, he talked about it in uh, the annual. Yeah. So, which is interesting. And we don't know what happened to the bands. No, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, Marvel you brought up that. Did. We don't know what happened to Marvel Boys ba oh. bands, which are duplicates, right? That I mean, yeah, I mean, they're fully functional. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to reread those issues to see how that played out. <laughs> We're still a few weeks yeah. away from those issues, I think. Maybe just yeah. one or two. 
But, uh, you know, I to but no, I, that's the <laughs> other thing. Yeah. What was it? Uh, last week, uh, Jane Foster Valkyrie number one came out and I saw she was fighting blue streak and he has like a whole gang now with like, they'll oh, have like cool. armors and like, yeah. And, and she was, Jane Foster was thinking like, uh, yeah, blue, the blue, blue streak and his gang have been talking about how, uh, it took two quasars to beat them or something. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh really? So, yeah. so I I did tweet out that uh, Al Ewing actually tweeted back and said, uh, "No, that's just a reference to Pleasant Hill." Oh, Rab okay. gets the bands, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Huh? So Al was the writer, the Jane Foster Valkyrie. Um, I think it was oh, it was him and somebody else. Who else? Um, yeah, there was a, there was, there was like two writers on there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Al Ewing and someone else. But yeah, Al Ewing actually got back. So I was like, wait a minute, is this about something uh, coming up? And he's like, no, it's Pleasant Hill. I was like, Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Darn it. All right. So let's get out of here again. Sounds. Next week, Quasar 29, and maybe the episode after, maybe we'll throw in some Guardians of the Galaxy. 90s era Guardians yes. of the Galaxy. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, Will Allred, Master of the Quantum Zone, where can people <laughs> find you? Uh, you can find me at. W A L L R E D. That's Gmail or Twitter or Facebook or whatever. I'm all over the place. Uh, you can find my uh, self published comic, Diary of Night, uh, which had a successful Kickstarter at diaryofnight.com. And you can find uh, the Quantum Zone at quantumzone.org, which has a giant checklist of Quasar appearances, for one thing, which is what I looked at to get those Guardians issues. <laughs> nice. See, yeah, you check out, check all the lists on there. All right. And, and just to hmm. go back to your, uh, your, uh, losing your train of thought earlier, I built that list because I couldn't remember <laughs> one, where he appeared, and two, uh-huh. if I had it or not. So there you go. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. I scan, I scan every cover of every comic book I have, and they're, they're on a hard drive in there because, you know, I don't yeah. have to remember. I can remember most okay. just looking at the cover if I have it or not, but yeah. Yeah. All right. But I'm not I'm not as good at it as I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm real bad. I, I, I'm real bad. I try to keep a list of uh, stuff that I need. Sometimes I don't update it after I go to the comic shop, and I buy, I've bought the same comic multiple yeah, times. Yeah, if I go to a yeah. convention looking for stuff, I either write it down on a piece of paper or I put it on my phone or something. Yeah. All right. Letter writer of Olympus. Matt Cotto, yes. where can people find you? Wait before hmm. before I have to interrupt this. Uh, can we can we just give him a nice slow clap here? There we go. What for writing the letter? <laughs> or <being>? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Right. Yeah, people. Right. Hey, write in. Tell us what impression was better: his Matt Kona or his Hercules? <laughs> I don't know. So it's where can they write to you, Matt Kona? <laughs> uh, you can write to me. Only to the Guardians of the Galaxy letter page. <laughs> respond, respond to me that you, you took my advice, you checked out the multiple podcasts, you got the trades, you rated the dollar bins, you love Wendell Vaughn as Quasar, and uh, or you can find me on social media <laughs> at Matt Kona, M-A-T-T-K-O-N-A. That's another, another way to reach me. And, oh, this is just a, a, a little update. I've mentioned this before in the past, but I just recorded a fun episode last night, and I painstakingly unfunly edited a the first best of the backstage at the naked comedy showcase podcast so you can find that on itunes if you look up that it's a long title backstage at the naked comedy showcase podcast but you know it was a fun time so yeah look it up and uh hit me up let me know what's going on and if you're in chicago on august 26 go see my wife at stage 773 Yale Gabish is really wonder live comedy. Shoshin might be there. Be cool. Nice. So, All right. yeah, flights from Australia to Chicago are pretty cheap. So, Ray, if you're listening, <laughs> check it out. You know, just go for the weekend. It's totally worth yeah, it. Yeah, screaming baby on a plane. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> just go for the night. Oh, okay. yeah. sorry. Oh. <laughs> That's that's right, Ray. Now you're just gonna hear night jokes every time now. Thank, thank you, Matt. You, you you've we've got a we've got a, a thing now. <laughs> Our Obi Wan Kenobi of comedy. All right, I've got to do a plugs. All right, so email us about any of this. Quant- uh, 
Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com. Follow Quantum Zone on Facebook, facebook.com slash Quantum Zone Pod. And check out Eon's Closet, uh, our Quasar group on our Facebook group. Uh, at Quantum Zone Pod and at CL Sidekicks on Twitter. Follow CL Sidekicks on Instagram. Uh, check out work in progress, capesandlunatics.org. Go subscribe to the Capes and Lunatics YouTube channel and subscribe to our week, new weekly newsletter. And I'll tell you everything we're doing that week. Uh, capesandlunatics.home.blog. Call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38CAPES. And now, going forward, if you want to watch us live, do this live. Do it live. Uh, you can always watch us on GetVocal, V-O-K-L dot com. All right. Woo. All right, everyone. Join us next time for the conclusion of <laughs> Many Men, a her, Many Men and a Baby. <laughs> many potential, many potential babies. I don't know. <laughs> Who is the fuck? What's this? Like a Jerry Springer or Mori episode? <laughs> they all are. <laughs> get more, get more Macuna Hercules. Uh, Come on, dog. We will be smited. <laughs> Yay and verily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get more night jokes. Uh, <laughs> yes, raise a good sport. Uh, go check out Into the Night at Mood Night Podcast. Yes, he's, he's very supportive of us. So I, I never mind throwing a plug his way. I think his favorite show is The Quantum Zone over here. So, there's good quality when he sees it. <laughs> so, so, everyone, right. come back next week and every week. And remember, Quantum Zoners. Keep it quantum. <laughs>